Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're gonna to talk about, do you need to register as a foreign LLC? So what do I mean by a foreign LLC? If you're an LLC, a limited liability company that is formed, is incorporated in a state, and let's say state A, and you do enough business or have enough nexus in state B, you might have to register as a foreign LLC in state B. Foreign doesn't mean outside the United States, it just means outside of that state. And the reason you have to register is because that state wants to know who you are, what your address is, they want you to pay taxes <laughs> to them or uh, franchise fees or registration fees, and they want you in the database in case one of their citizens or one of their other companies who are located in that state want to sue you. One thing to remember is that the standard for whether or not you need to file as a foreign LLC in a state is different from whether you need to pay sales taxes or register to for tax purposes. And it's also different than the business license rules. The reason for that is that sometimes those rules are in completely different parts of the government. So some of the rules are from the state government and some of them, be, some of them may be from a city or county government. So they're gonna have different rules. But even if the state is making all the rules, it's a different agency of the state that is making the rule. And so they're gonna have a different standard for what nexus means in that state. So what does nexus mean? Nexus means you have enough presence in that state for them to have jurisdiction over you, for them to have power over you. So what does nexus mean? Typically in a state, they're gonna have some list of the various things you may do in that state, which means they have the right to make rules about you. You have enough nexus where you have to register there and do various other things. Typically they're things that are physical presence in that state. So you have a factory or some manufacturing place or assembly place. You have a warehouse that you're shipping from. You really wanna pay attention to this one because if you use another company to ship your stuff, they may have a warehouse in that state and you don't even realize it and that can get imputed onto you in certain situations. Any human people you have in that state, an employee, a sales rep, and then of course, if you have an office in that state, some physical location. There will also be a list of things that do not qualify as nexus. So for example, having a bank account in a state. A bank account by itself in California isn't enough for nexus. Independent contractors. Now an independent contractor if that person is truly an independent contractor, shouldn't be enough for nexus. But you really need to look into whether or not that person really is an independent contractor. In California, it can be very difficult to keep people as independent contractors because a lot of times they really are employees. So you have to make that determination very carefully. Another aspect is you, the owner of the business. So if you own an LLC, you own membership shares, which is like stock for an LLC, that fact in and of itself doesn't make you have to file as a foreign LLC in the place where you're located if the business is actually doing business somewhere else. I say by itself because there may be things that you're doing, there may be things that are how your business is set up that make it so you do have to register. Um, if you're at not just an owner, but you're also an employee. If you're transacting business in that state, you act as a sales rep in that state. There are times where just the fact that you're the owner and you're residing in a state can mean you need to register there because of other stuff that you're doing. Fundamentally, the overall concept is that you are engaging in transacting business in that state. Does it mean one isolated sale from another state. What I'm talking about is the difference between interstate commerce and intrastate commerce. Interstate commerce is when someone is selling something from in one state to someone in another state, and that's it. They're not going to that state and doing it in the other state. They're just going from here over there between states. 
that's regulated by the federal government, the federal government in Washington, DC. Intrastate commerce is inside of a state. So here in California, I have a client here in California and I'm physically located in California. I'm the sales rep for the company in California and I meet someone to sell them something in California. It's all happening inside the state and that's why the state has jurisdiction, has the power to regulate that transaction and to regulate you as the LLC. Many states have a number of transactions that you have to do before to get Nexus. So it could be a certain number of transactions with a certain number of days. It could be a certain amount of money over a certain number of days or over the course of a year. This is gonna be true both to register as an LLC in that state and also for sales tax issues and business licenses. This numbers can be different amounts of money and different numbers of transactions and different timeframes. So you're gonna to have to look at each state where you're transacting business to see if you've crossed over the line. The bottom line is, if you're incorporated in one state, if you formed your LLC in one state, and you're doing business in another state, and you have some kind of connection with that state, think of it as a physical connection, an in-person connection with that state, you're probably going to have to register as a foreign LLC. If you don't, if you're just shipping things to that state, you wanna look at the details to make sure that you're not going to have to register as a foreign LLC, pay sales taxes, get a business license, any of that kind of stuff, because it really depends upon the kinds of transactions you're doing and the other connections you have with that state. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about this issue, feel free to post them below and then hit thumbs up if you found it helpful and subscribe for more tips for small business owners. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.